Hello and welcome to this fourth part of the software engineering lecture course series overview. Uh, and in this uh, lecture, I'm going to talk about metrics and different development metrics we can use to improve our software. And well, we we're not perfect. We'll not develop the perfect software the first time, and it is an in incremental process. Uh, but we do have some metrics, some quantitative metrics we can uh, use to evaluate whether we've succeeded or not. So these are coupling, cohesion, sufficiency, completeness, and primitiveness. And I'm going to go through each of these. So coupling is the strength between modules. Uh, we are striving for weak coupling. Uh, weak coupling makes the system less complex. Strong coupling makes it easier to break and more complex to understand. To give you an example, inheritance, for instance, has strong coupling. And I can give you an example. If you have two different developers developing the parent and the children, now if the parent or if the developer developing the parent wants to change something, they will change the behavior of the children as well. And the risk for something breaking is quite significant because the other developers developing the children don't know about this change or don't necessarily know about this change. So we should avoid inheritance uh, unless, there is the, uh, unless there are significant advantages from using inheritance in that particular case, which there are, might be uh, inheritance exists for a reason, but we should at least try and avoid it if it's possible. So we have these um, different types of coupling. We, can, we, can, we should strive for aggregation, but just to explain the different versions. So composition is when an object owns another, it has another object. So that means that other object cannot exist without the parent object, so to speak. The zone button cannot exist without the ticket machine. It's useless. That means that the zone button cannot exist on its own. And so there's some strong coupling between these. Aggregation, on the other hand, um, that they exist on their own. So basically, the exhaust system uh, knows of a muffler and a tailpipe. So basically, they might be arguments to the constructor. When you are when you are creating a new exhaust system, you might send a muffler and tailpipe as an uh, as arguments. So it knows about these. But they, the muffler and tailpipe, can exist on their own. Uh, so even if there isn't an ex exhaust system. Now, inheritance being the strongest coupling, basically the button or the cancel button and zone buttons, they are buttons. So they inherit all the features of button unless they override some of it. So we should, stri we should strive to use aggregation, but composition over inheritance. Cohesion. Uh, it measures the degree of connectivity between uh, within a module. So um, you should try and make sure a class only deals with that specific purpose that it's designed for. It's very easy to create a class that does pretty much everything. I mean, I've done that. I've created classes that are thousands of lines of code and they do absolutely everything. However, reading, going back to that code later on and trying to understand and read it is absolutely horrible. So try to design classes that are well bounded. You can see by the class name what they are, what the purpose of these classes are, and they should be focused on only doing one thing. Sufficiency means that you should try and capture uh, enough of the characteristics and abstraction to permit meaningful and efficient in it interaction. But you should keep it small, keep it sim simple. Don't overdo it. Uh, try and keep a minimalistic interface. I, in the beginning when I was started coding, I, I tried to do like, I, I tried to be very flexible and I created like five, six constructors for each. Um, but that just makes it more complicated to read the code. So try and imagine what the purpose of your software is. Try to be so somewhat flexible for reuse, but don't overdo it. Try and keep it simple. Completeness. Make sure that you, you capture all the meaningful characteristics of the abstraction. 
So uh, basically, make sure that it's uh, reusable. I mean, if there are similar features somewhere else, make sure that you capture enough of the functionality to make this reusable. So this is, you have to balance this a bit with sufficiency. So complete, completeness and sufficiency, they balance out. Make sure that it's reusable, but don't overdo it. Primitiveness, and uh, this has to do with functions or, or methods. Make sure that uh, they are implemented so that you can understand what this method is doing by, or the function is doing by the function name, by the signature, so to speak. Um, so primitive operations are those that can be efficiently implemented only if given access to the underlying representation of an abstraction. Well, basically a method should be focused on one thing. Don't do methods called uh, fixing stuff. We don't know what that means. Um, and it's for another developer to come in and read the code. It's very difficult to understand what does this method do. So try and come up with good names for your methods and make sure that they're doing one thing. It's better to create more methods in that case. Um, and also make sure you comment them properly. So these are the five metrics that we use. So what are the important choices? Well, that depends on what you're doing at the moment. Um, and there's always a balance. You need to find a good balance for yourself. But keep these in mind when you're developing software. There's some other considerations as well, like how you should choose operations. Um, there are different design patterns that we can use uh, that can help you with structure, will help you with behavior and, and uh, communication between classes, etc. Um, we should try and, and define primitive operations that have well, small, small and well-defined behavior because it's easier to read the code. Some other things like um, there's a... Um, um, balanced as well between having like one operation that does a lot of things or several operations that do very you know limited behavior so if you have one operation of course you have a simpler interface it's very very easy to understand interface but if you're gonna reuse or if you're gonna have some other developer come in and read the code it's like what is happening here it's very difficult if you have several operations of course it's uh, you get the interface that it's more complicated um, and if you go to the Java doc and read some of the big classes, you can find like finding the specific functionality you're looking for can be quite difficult because they are quite difficult, quite complex interfaces. And you also get some fragmentation. So again, there's a balance between these two. So find a good spot and well, which suits your software. And then, um, Choosing your operations, um, if you should have only functions that check states and uh, or if you should have uh, procedures which change states so you to uh, um, actually change the values, etc. Or if you should use a mixture, again, this is something that you have to find a balance of. Usually we use a mixture of, of all these. Then we have other criteria like you design for reusability. Um, is this behavior, is your class something that could be reused somewhere else in the software? Uh, do they know about this? Um, also complexity. complexity. Um, is it difficult to implement the feature? Can other people understand it? Applicability. Um, how relevant is this code for this type, for this class? Uh, implementation knowledge. Um, uh, does it de de depend on the internal knowledge on internal details of a specific type? So these are criteria you need to keep in mind as well. Uh, just to give you a, a quick view of the different implications of um, different design methodologies. So you can have narrow and deep. So basically you are considering in, uh, using inheritance. So you have parent and children's. Um, basically you end up with trees of different classes, you end up with small classes, a lot of reusability, uh, you exploit commonality, but it becomes, becomes difficult to understand and it's easy to break if someone changes something in the parent. Now if you do want to change the common behavior, it's also quick, so it's a balance again. 
uh, it's easy to change the functionality for a lot of children at the one at one time. Uh, wide and shallow, shallow basically use aggregation or, or composition for a lot. So you have a lot of loosely coupled classes that may not be obvious how they fit together. Um, they may be large. You can of course design very small classes as well, uh, but typically they are larger. Um, they don't typically exploit commonality, but you can create classes that are reusable instead. So um, it's possible to go around, uh, but it's a lot easier to understand. Basically, you can look at the folder structure and see what files are there and, and understand what's going on in the software. And then you have the balance, which is you know typically where people land. So, um, rule of thumb one, some you know, good practices. Uh, inheritance is appropriate when every instance of one class may also be viewed as an instance of another, so an is a relationship. Um, number two, if, it's, if the behavior of an object is more than the sum of its individuals, par individual parts, then aggregation is probably superior, so it has a relationship. And you should always favor composition over inheritance. And of course, aggregation over both composition and inheritance. Uh, you should always program to an interface, not an implementation. So this has to do with encapsulation as well. You don't want to reveal the inner workings of your code. If you can just show another developer, like here's the interface, this is what I'm gonna develop and they can develop separately. They don't know about, they don't need to know about your code, how it works. They just need uh, need to know that, okay, this is, uh, these are the methods and functions available to use. So that's what you should do. Always code to an interface. And then some other trade-offs like storage versus composition. Um, now in modern computers, this may not be as much of an issue, but I still bring it up just so you know. So basically, you can, in some cases, oh, imagine this, we have, um, we, we are going to calculate the area of a square. So either you can do as in the red text here, uh, where you define a variable called width, and every time someone wants to get the area, you calculate the width. So this saves storage, but every time someone wants to get the area, you do a calculation. In the green text, instead, we store both width and area, so we actually use up more memory, but you only calculate the area once. So um, here is a balance in case you have um, performance issues or, or you need to consider these things, then it's good to remember that you know you have always have this choice between using more memory or using more competition or computation. So uh, finally, I would like to round off um, these these two sessions on UML with something about failing gracefully. So using UML and using metrics, etc. Uh, is all about being able to fail gracefully, meaning you want to realize early on if you're on the wrong track. Get feedback from users early, get um, get system experts involved, get some opinions, get some, maybe have some mock-ups, um, anything that you can use to get some opinions some feedback to see if you're on the right track. If you fail early, it doesn't cost much to start over. If you have spent a year of development and you realize, well, this is not what the customer wants, then you will end up having to have spent all that money for nothing. So fail gracefully, so fail, fail early, or catch the errors early, is much better. And you, you do you manage these risks by identify the risk early, use the cost value risk table, uh, you use uh, involved system experts have tests early, uh, use mockups, use uh, UML diagrams and, and UML models. And look at the risks and see where where the problems are. So, thank you for this lecture and hopefully you'll watch the other lectures as well.